I'm assuming this coming Saturday at 6 p.m. is the men's meeting. Any questions about that, men, just see Brother Barker. And then this coming Sunday, we have Brother Michael side and fighting preaching for us. That's elder side and fighting. But tell him when you see him that he looks very young. And Sunday also is just one service at 11. And we're going to have a friends and family dinner day to follow. Oh, I, I apologize. I'm not on the right date. That is the 28th, actually. So don't listen to what I said. Also, another announcement, strawberries for sale. Are We have white and chocolate or mixed covered strawberries, $10. See Sister Stamper if you have any questions. And if you did order those, please turn your money into Sister Stamper. And that is all our current announcements we have right now. So glad that everyone's here tonight. So glad to have our missionaries, brother and sister Groves. Good to have them. And it's, good, it's just good to have everyone else that's here. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's Valentine's Day, of course. And you could be anywhere else, but you're here at church. And you're here with the one that can love you the most, love you the truest. And that's God. No one else can show you the kind of love that he can show you. And it's so good to be here with everybody. I was going to intro with kind of a valentines -y thing, but I, I had something on my heart that the Lord laid, and the Lord just talked to me with this morning. And it's, I'm not trying to preach before we get started, but I just want to do, ha, uh, say what the Lord put in my heart today. So in Numbers chapter 9, it talks about, it's the children of Israel, and they're wandering in the wilderness. In this particular chapter, it's talking about the tabernacle and the cloud and the fire, if anybody's familiar with it. And in the verse 15 says, it says, Now on this day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle and the tent of the testimony. From evening until morning, it was above the tabernacle, like the appearance a fire and so it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night and if you skip all the way to the end of that chapter verse 23 it says at the command of the Lord they remained encamped and at the command of the Lord they journeyed but they kept the charge of the Lord at the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses you see the they could not leave the camp the camp could not pick up and move unless God said so. So if the cloud was there, they had to stay. It could, have been, it could be days, it could be months, it could be years that they're going to stay at that spot. But as long as God told them to stay there, they had to stay. But then when he told them to go and journey, they had to journey. Whatever time of the day it was, it could be the middle of the night, they had to go right then, pack up then, and there, and go. And I say all that to say this, that he, this is way late on my heart. When God puts you somewhere, that's where you're supposed to be. You may not always enjoy where you're at at that moment, but I promise you, days, months, year, whatever time frame that it takes, He will have you journey to the next step. And I don't know who that's for. I don't know exactly what situations are going on, but I read that this morning, and that's been in my mind all day. And when I was asked to open the service and I felt that was something that should be said so take that take it to heart and if and if you're wondering if that's for you just ask God tonight while we worship and praise him just ask him if that's that's what his what his plan is for you only won't we take a moment and let's pray to pray right now Thank 
generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you a good God. Has he been good to you this week, church? Did you get a healing on Sunday that lasted through Monday? Did you get enough that's brought you back into the house of the Lord? I'm excited to be in the house. I'm going to take up an offer and I'm going to ask our ushers to come. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. This is the New King James. says, let, So let each one give us the he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And this is being Valentine's Day. I was I was driving down Carol Malone and I saw them selling roses. And I thought my wife would like some roses. As I got closer, I saw it was fifty dollars for two dozen roses. I got too much of my dad and me to do that cheerfully. <laughs> Sorry, baby. I would have been grudging in my giving. But when I give unto the Lord, because what he's done for me, there's no grudge in me giving unto him because it was all given by him and I'm just giving it back to his kingdom. And if we're going to show some love to somebody, why don't we show some love to the man that went to the cross and died because he thought I was worth it. 
let's give of her money, but also let's give of her time. Let's give of her worship tonight. Lord God, we ask that you'll bless this offering. God, bless the rest of this service. God, have your will, Lord. I believe that you've got a mighty work today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fire was all around them. 
but I want to remind you there was there was a fourth man in that fire today and he's in this place right now to be a good God? Hadn't He showed us, church, how faithful He is? Amen. Even in our hardest times, even in our darkest hours. Amen. He's good. He's faithful. We can run to Him and He's a strong tower. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. They were singing that song. And, 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 and she sang her favor is my delight. Amen. And 
That needs to be the song of the church, that, Lord, no matter how much money is there or how much money isn't there, no matter what, whether we're in our new building yet or not, no matter what's going on, what's right, what's wrong, God, if I have your favor, that's right. We're not delighting in the accolades of men. We're not trying to be like another church. We're not, not trying to have all the money the neighbors got. But God, if I have your favor, if I have your approval, that's what really matters. Amen. Somebody in this house, you're just you're struggling with where you are in life today. Brother Derek mentioned that to us, and he was in the vein of the Holy Ghost. I mean, we can struggle with where we are right now. But let me tell you, if we would stop worrying about position and if we would stop worrying about the, the fulfillment in these things and we would just get fulfilled in God, if we would just seek the favor of God in it, that's the only way there's true fulfillment. Your job will never fulfill you. The accolades of your loved ones, as important as they might be, they will never fulfill you. Amen. But when you have a relationship with God, that doesn't wane based on the check in the mail. It doesn't wane based on who is calling you and, and apologizing and who is still mad at you. When we have the favor of God, when you are doing something for God in God's kingdom, that's where fulfillment is. Happiness in the way the world uses it is a lie. It's fleeting. You never attain. Even that, that, that statement we seem to chase after, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Why? You never really get to keep happy. You're always pursuing it. Amen. But when I'm fulfilled, even on the bad days, even when happiness seems so elusive, there's still some joy because I've got a hold of Happiness is not a fruit of the Spirit, but I'm telling you, you can get so full of the Holy Ghost that joy is there when the storms come. And joy is there when the doctor says it's not a good report. And joy is there when the family situation is rocky. Amen. I mean, that comes from Him. That comes from relationship. That comes from the Holy Ghost. Amen. You might leave here and things are still wrong. And you might leave here and things are still tore up. And happiness might not be waiting at home for you tonight. But I'm telling you, you can attain some joy here that follows you home. And that you wake up on a Thursday morning tomorrow. And that joy hasn't left. You can get in a prayer meeting before you go to work. And you find the same joy that you found at this altar. Praise God. Amen. The Lord's preaching to somebody. Amen. Amen. It, running away is not the answer. Running towards something you think will make you happy is not the answer. Amen. But running to an altar and letting God put some fruit of the Spirit in you. Amen. That's the answer. Praise God. And, and that answer is in this place today. Jesus is in this place. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. I feel like we kind of took off a, a little bit where we left off on Sunday. Amen. And, and God just wants to talk to us and, and dwell with us. Um, and I did just want to take, last Wednesday we did this about a few particular things. But I just want to take a few moments tonight and praise God for what he is doing. We have, have, have been signing up on that prayer calendar on the bulletin board. I think there was two dates for this month not yet taken. So if you're not on there, even if you just want to be on there again, please sign up for one of those dates. We want to make sure that every day somebody is committed to interceding for our city, for the church where God has placed us. And, uh, and I just wanted to share a couple things that, that remind us that God is hearing our prayers. God is working. And uh, it's, it's not us, but it is that our obedience. It really is. God responds to obedience. He responds to prayers. It's, it's a great big God, but the fact is he hears the prayers of his people. And in just the last two weeks, amen, we have closed on the land that we have long since been seeking to purchase. We have baptized one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sunday we had at least two people that, that said I was healed at that service on Sunday. 
We had seven first-time visitors on Sunday. Let me tell you, even when it doesn't seem like your prayers are getting past the ceiling, God is hearing. God is answering. Amen. God is working in this place. Keep on praying. Keep on being faithful. Amen. God is working. And thank you for those who have been interceding. Thank you so much for interceding for our city, for interceding for your co-workers, for inviting people. God is moving. Amen. And we are, I mean, we are, we are already on the beginning of revival. We really are. Amen. But I believe we're going to see people filled with the Holy Ghost in a way that we've never seen before. I believe we're going to see people just go. I mean, I'm, we're going to win a few key people that go out and begin to just bring their families in. And when we're fishing with hooks, man, God's just going to start. We're going to see nets cast out. Amen. And fishes begin to come in. Fishing. God is moving. God is working. Amen. Thank you for praying. And we just, it, it's one thing for me to, to get off the phone call where people tell me this stuff. And I say, well, thank God for that. And I praise God. But I think when we, there's something special about when we do it as a body. Amen. Because maybe God didn't heal you Sunday, but tonight could be your night. Next Sunday could be your night. The fact is, he's still in the healing business. And that's good news for all of us. Amen. The fact is, he's still baptizing people and washing away their sins. That's good news for all of us. He's still making a way, praise God. Amen. How faithful, how wonderful he is. Amen. And thank you for standing. Thank you for worshiping the Lord. So you can begin to make your way back to your seats. If you are standing, continue to stand. But for those up here worshiping, amen, you can make your way back to your seats. And, uh, uh, well, I tell you what, you can be seated. You can be seated. And uh, thank you for being willing to stand. Uh, but I did want to uh, also make mention that uh, not this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, Brother Mike Seidenfeiden will be ministering for us. Uh, but the next Sunday, February the 28th, will be a friends and family day. And that's similar to what we've done for our fifth Sunday celebrations. But it's just a great service to invite people to, invite your friends, your coworkers, your family members, um, and uh, call them up and just invite them to that special service. That will be one 11 o'clock service. We're going old school on that. And by old school, I mean about three months ago when we had service at 11 o'clock. And uh, one 11 o'clock service, and we'll be having a dinner after that. And the first thing we think of is, do we have room for that? And the answer is not really. Um, and and that's, that's part of why we're doing this. Because we have people that are coming to the second Sunday service that, that if you only go to the first Sunday service, you've not got to meet them yet. And we have people that go to the first Sunday service um, that, that if you only go to the second Sunday service, you've not got to meet them because they've started coming after we uh, split up our Sunday services. And so this gives us an opportunity not just to come in here and be crowded, but we're coming in here to celebrate what God has done. We want our church family to be able to see, hey, there's somebody I've not met yet. And we want you to be able to see, man, we... That this is full. I don't have room next to me anymore. Amen. And that is a testament to how good God is and what God is doing. And we just want to celebrate our growth together. So it will be crowded that Sunday. It will be standing room only when we go to eat. Amen. And that's kind of the point. We, we, we in the future, will probably get, uh, get a different venue to have those special services on. But for this first one, we wanted to just celebrate uh, what it is that God has done in our church. And we wanted everybody to see how it is that God has added to the church. So aren't you thankful he's still adding to his church? Aren't you thankful he's growing this thing? Praise God. Amen. And uh, so we do have with us tonight two very special guests, uh, Brother and Sister Groves. We're honored to have them with us. And... Uh, let, let me pause right here to say that if you are a guest with us, you are a very special guest to us. And thank you for coming to be with us in the house of the Lord. We appreciate you. But brother and sister Groves, uh, these are uh, missionaries that are with, uh, with us tonight. And um, we, we used to have missionaries on Sundays. Some I've stopped doing that uh, since we started doing mirror services. 
uh, with really with the missionary in mind because it's a lot to preach both of those services on a Sunday, and I'm not cruel enough to uh, invite them in to bless them and then have them work them to death. So, uh, but tonight uh, we are very blessed to have them, and and I will say uh, that they were coming in, getting ready to uh, walk in the doors, and uh, they they pulled up and. Uh, there was some kids standing by the double doors over there, and the excitement in those children. And, uh, and I kind of got to confess, I think I was just as excited as them. We love missionaries here. We really do. Uh, but but those kids were so excited, and they had the doors open before they were even out of the car, holding these doors open over here. And... Uh, I don't know how long they held them open for several minutes and I didn't even say, Hey, you're letting the air out or any of that, any of that dad stuff that I was tempted to say, because I thought, man, let our kids think of them as heroes. They are heroes. I mean, they are kids. The world advertises so many other things as heroes. <clears throat> Amen. Let it, let your kids understand. Let them not just think, let them know missionaries are heroes. They are doing something for the kingdom of God. Amen. I think it's good our kids will grow up saying, I want to be a missionary when I grow up. Praise God. And uh, so that's why uh, our, our toddler class is is over there tonight. But our super church and our youth group, they are over here tonight uh, because we want our, our children and our youth to be able to uh, see these missionaries as well. And uh, so, brother and sister Groves, we love you. We appreciate you. Um, I'm not going to bring him to the pulpit at this time. He has a video presentation we're going to play. And then after that, they will minister to us. Uh, but we've already clapped for him. We already have. But I think one more time, why don't we show them how much we appreciate them taking their time to come be with us. Amen. God bless you. You can play the video. We're appointed missionaries to the country of Kenya, Sudan, and South Sudan. Shortly after our conversion, uh, my, after my wife and I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we were baptized in Jesus' name. We, uh, two weeks after we were, we were um, in the church in Jamaica, we were in a mission service. And uh, as they were going through the, the missions program, carrying, carrying around some flags, I, my wife and I both had an experience, a very powerful experience, where as relatively new converts, um, I started to hear as if somebody was speaking to me, um, but it was, it was like the voice was inside. The, that voice was telling me that at, my wife and I would be carrying the gospel to these different nations. When we met up after church, she also had had an experience, and I let her tell you what happened to her. Okay, I was um, actually sitting there in the, in the chair, in the bench, and um, I heard this voice speaking to me behind me and I'm thinking who is this talking to me so anyways I um I turn around to look and uh, nobody was there talking to me people they were just worshiping and uh, I we were just like two weeks in the church and I said to myself Lord I I don't know much about the Bible but one thing I know the devil doesn't know my heart only you knows it and I said, I said to him, um, Lord, I'm going to pray that prayer in my heart. And I said, Lord, if this is you talking to me, you tell my husband the same thing. So when we met up out after service, I was about to share with her what happened to me, how this voice on the inside was telling me that, that uh, we both were going to be carrying the gospel to these countries. And then she said to me, Patrick, 
she started saying, saying to me she had this experience. She started sharing the experience that we just talked about. And she said she heard this audible voice speaking to her and telling her that you and your husband are going to carry the gospel to these countries. And when she said, when she said what she said to me, I realized it was almost word for word what the Lord had said to me. And I, at that point, we both realized that the Lord was, had spoken to us and that this was obviously um, the will of God for our lives. However, um, what we didn't realize at the time, because uh, we were fairly new converts and being new to, new to the experience of the born again experience and, and everything to do with uh, the apostolic experience, we didn't realize it would take us literally over 20 years before we actually were able, first of all, that we were appointed missionaries in 2004 while we were in, in living in Canada at the time after um, working there and attending Bible school. Uh, we, we started deputizing uh, two years after that. We arrived on the field in East Africa in 2009. So we started working since 2009 in both in Kenya and in, in, in South Sudan. We, we actually pioneered the work in South Sudan and we were able to register uh, the church when South Sudan gained independence in 2011. We actually were able to, to um, uh, register at the United Pentecostal Church of South Sudan and uh, we continued working in both Kenya and South Sudan and also in Sudan. We thank God because uh, today we now have over 60 churches that have been established in that country and we thank God we have over over 20,000 constituents in the church there so we have seen rapid growth of the church in South Sudan our primary goal right now is to do um, to train our leaders our pastors and our people in general, because many of them are very young in the faith, given the, 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 the rapid growth of the church there. We've had a lot of people converted, but um, given the, the circumstances in, in South Sudan, because of the instability in the country and the economic situation, dire economics, many of our churches, they, they don't have facilities. They actually meet on the trees. We have over 20, 20 churches that actually meet on their trees. And so one of the things that we're trying to do now is to help them to be able to build facilities so that they, they can actually have a place to meet. In Kenya, one of our primary aims is to help with training ministers. You know, we, are, we have a Bible school in Kenya and um, that Bible school has been instrumental in training. A lot of uh, our leaders, not only in Kenya, but um, in many of the African nations right now that have works established. We just want to say how much we appreciate your prayers and support. Without the support and prayers of our partners, our, our, our churches, um, our brethren in North America, we would not be able to do what we're doing here in East Africa. The Lord is speaking to your heart about actually going to the field to help in the work of God. Um, speak to your leader, speak to your pastor and um, get some direction. If you feel led to be able to help us, um, just to give you an idea of some of the needs that we have. We mentioned before, we've seen so many people convert, especially in, in, in South Sudan. Um, but in many of these, with many of these, uh, these churches, many of them do not have actual proper buildings to meet in. Many of them meet on the trees. We have, right now in South Sudan, we have about 20 churches that meet on the trees. To build a, a, a decent building in South Sudan, it would, it would cost about $5,000. Um, and you know, we would, we would appreciate if the Lord again was to speak to your heart, to be able to help us to do, to do that or to contribute toward that. We ha when we have conferences in Kenya, um, in, our, in our conference center, uh, many of our pastors, when they come, they literally are sleeping on the floor. And um, so one of the projects we have is to buy mattresses and to even build beds at some point to be able for them to be able to have a proper place to sleep. So we want to thank you for, again, for everything that you've, you've done and you're doing to help us in terms of your support and your prayers. God bless you.
Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm just standing here and watching everyone looking at me. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't God good? Praise God. I'm, I'm not going to take up too much time. I just want to thank Pastor and his wife and this church for um, inviting us to come and share this time with you. Praise God. You know, wherever we are, we are in the field. This whole world is the field. And this is just part of the field. And we are all missionaries, believe it or not. We are just passing through. The Bible tells us we are pilgrims. We are passing through. Just look at yourself as this is not your permanent home. Praise God. Praise God. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I remember when I came into this church, my husband and I, we came out of the Trinitarian Church. And I didn't know anything about this oneness gospel. All I knew about was Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I mean, Jesus, baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's all I, I knew at the time. And so this is, my husband and I, we are from the island of Jamaica, as you heard in the video. Praise God. So we are going to um, talk a little different. Praise God. We speak the British English <laughs> and Patwa. So if I said, may I come with you, means I'm coming with you. Praise God. May, may I come with you? It's Patwa. But the English is, I'm coming with you. Praise God. Praise God. And so <coughs> we started reading the Bible and uh, just reading the Bible. And we saw different things in the Bible. And we, we had never seen about um, anyone in the scriptures, you know, baptized in Jesus' name. Um, never read it in the scripture. And in school, back in Jamaica, we studied Acts of the Apostles. It's so strange. That was one of the subjects. But guess what? I've never, ever seen Acts 2.38. And we studied. But we studied all of Paul's missionary journeys. But never see Acts 2.38. But thank God he showed it to us one day. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and here we are. Praise God. I remember we started searching for churches. My husband and I read in the Bible. He reads a lot. He would just sit and read. I'm not like that, but I'll read, but not like him. And he would be reading and reading, and he would be calling me, Gene, come and look at this scripture. And so, you know, I would go and look, and, and we're thinking, well, Jesus is God. Praise God. But let me back up a little bit. We, we were invited to this Pentecostal church. We were searching, actually, because what we read in the scriptures, we were searching for this church. So we would go to different churches. And uh, we went to different churches, but it wasn't like the one in the Bible that we read about. And so we had a friend um, who also was seeking to find this church. And he was invited to this Pentecostal, United Pentecostal Church in Kingston, Jamaica. And so he went, and uh, he came back. It was a night service he went to. And he when he came back the following day, he called my husband, and he said, Patrick, this is the church. You have to go. This is the church. And guess what? They baptize you as you want to be baptized. We read in the scripture, actually, you know, and uh, we wanted to be baptized. We didn't know anything about Jesus' name, baptism. We only know that we are supposed to be baptized. And so the gentleman who married us is a relative, relative of um, my husband-in-law. And uh, we went, he married us. And so we, we went to him for him to baptize us. But he's Trinitarian. <laughs> and he told us, you know, you have to go to so many weeks of classes. 
So my husband said, you know, sir, I've read this Bible more than one time from front to back. And I've never seen by, um, baptismal classes in the Bible. So he told him, okay, we cannot change it for you. This is going on for years and years and years, hundreds of years. We cannot change it for you. And then he, we decided, that's when we decided we are going to go to tr every church in our city to find it, that one. But when this young man went to this church now, we did, and he said, you know what, they'll baptize you right away. We went, we got baptized the first night. But when we walked into that service, we looked at each other and we are thinking, these people, they are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they are crazy because they are jumping, shouting, speaking in tongues and doing all sorts of things. But, you know, we loved it. That's the, that's the only difference. We loved it because we said these people are worshiping God with everything. Praise God. And so right after service, we, we went and we got baptized. We didn't know it was Jesus' name because they were, you see like how you play the music so loud? That's how they were playing the music. We couldn't hear a thing they were saying over us. <laughs> so we thought we were baptized in the titles. So we were okay. Then I'm cutting this short because we have a small um, well, period of time to speak. But anyways, um, then after that, we had a, um, a prophecy crusade going on in, in our city, in the city, in the arena in Kingston, Jamaica. And they were talking about prophecy. So we went. And uh, um, after this service, you know, my husband walked up to the altar. So I thought he was going to the altar. But he tricked me. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> He, he walked, he, wa he went back behind the platform because he wanted to talk to the pastor about some scriptures. And I just stopped in the altar. I, w I got up and walked behind him and I just stopped in the altar. And I, I just knelt there. And I didn't care who was standing there or I didn't, I just look up, you know, and like I'm talking to you now, that's, I was talking out just like this. And I'm thinking, God, they're telling me about this Holy Ghost. But, and speaking in tongues, I, I don't understand. But anyways, God, I know you're coming back here one day. And I said, when you come back, you're not going to leave me. I am coming with you. And I said, I don't I really understand about this speaking in tongues and this Holy Ghost coming and living inside of you and you speak in tongues, I say, I don't. But if this is what to take me to heaven, give it to me. <laughs> Praise God. And I began to say, Jesus! The third time I opened my mouth to say, it was all tongues. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm, I want to encourage someone here tonight. It's not hard to receive the Holy Ghost. Sometimes people come to the altar and they struggle. And they are there for maybe sometimes hours, maybe years, trying to receive the Holy Ghost. It is not hard to receive the Holy Ghost. Open your heart. The Lord looks on the heart. Your mouth can say something different from what your heart is saying. And the Bible speaks about that too. Praise God. So it's not hard. Jesus is right here. And is waiting for you to just come and say, Lord, pour, pour out your spirit in, on me right now, Lord Jesus. And he can do it. He did it for me. He will do it for you. I was a wretched sinner. Praise God. But God took me out of that filth. And placed my feet now on solid ground. And I love the Lord with everything in my being.
I'm not going to give up anything. Anything for the Lord. If my husband should walk away, God forbid. I will stick with the Lord. God bless you. We love you. And we appreciate you. And thank you so much for having us. But I just want to say one more thing. Please, if you are here tonight without the Holy Ghost, come. He's right here. He's right here. He's just waiting. He's just waiting. He's right here. Come, receive him. He's not just for me alone. He's for you too. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How many believe the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I love to hear testimonies because testimonies to me basically are just proof that what God's word says is true. Amen. And I know many of us here, you have a testimony. Amen. Is there anybody here? That you desire the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Like my wife was saying. Maybe there are some things you don't understand about it. But you have never had this experience of being filled with the Spirit of God. Like we were. And with the evidence to speak in other tongues. But you desire. You desire to have everything that God has for you. Let me put it that way. Is there anybody here? That you would just lift your hands and say. I would like to have that experience. Anybody here? And please don't feel. Then one of the reasons why we kind of approach things the way we do is because, of course, we spend most of our time in Africa. And uh, one of the things you, you begin to realize, having lived in Jamaica and then we lived in Canada, North America for over 20 years, and then being in Africa for the time, you begin to realize uh, there are some really... Um, different situations you come upon. And like Pastor just mentioned about, you know, you folks um, uh, acquiring another piece of land, and I think you're, you're looking at a building program. Well, sir, as you heard, if our people had what you have right here, <laughs> they, would be, they would be more than overjoyed. Amen? Just kind of gives you perspective. What is important, and we tell our people, you know what we say to them? Those who, some of our churches, as you heard, we have churches where we have, we have well over 500 people worshiping under a tree. Amen? I wish I had some of the pictures here, but we don't. But I'm just going to go quickly to the word of the Lord and just leave something briefly with you. Just to kind of, um, kind of highlight what my wife just talked about. Amen. Because what we tell our people when the Lord comes, don't worry about the tree. Because when the Lord comes, he's not coming for the tree. He's coming for the people under the tree. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we need to remember that because I, I thank God and I've, I've seen God has blessed our people. Just like even this assembly. This is a beautiful assembly to us. But you know what? What's really important here are the people in this building. Amen. Amen? Praise God. And we need to remember that. John chapter 7, praise God, is where I'm going tonight. Verse 21 to 23. This is kind of Jesus is, is ending his teaching, which, we, which they talk about the Sermon on the Mount, refer to it as that. Verse 21 to 27. And he makes this statement in closing. He has taught many things about the kingdom of God. And then he makes a statement, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many, he said, will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, they acknowledge him as Lord. I want you to notice. Have we, uh, have we not prophesied in your name? They preached, they prophesied in his name. Jesus didn't contradict them. Seemed like it must, might have been true. And in thy name have we cast out devils. They even cast out devils in Jesus' name. In, my, in thy name done many wonderful works. They said, have we not done these miracles and things in your name? He didn't contradict them. But this is what he said. 
he said, but then will I profess unto these people that I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. I believe what the Lord did here was he basically took us to the end of all things. What we're doing here, gathering together, not only in this service, but every week, every day we come, every time we take up our Bible, every time we spend time in prayer, we're basically just preparing for one event, and that is when the Lord comes or where we stand before him. That's all that really we're looking for. Everything else is not going to matter. And from this passage of scripture, the Lord was not talking about people who didn't care about God, didn't regard God, atheists or whatever, or didn't, didn't even get, you know, he didn't even attend church. In fact, it seems like these people were what we would call pretty religious people. They, in other words, they were, were involved with some what we call religious activities. Praise God. But as you see from this, it's a tragic situation. Because they're standing before the Lord. Amen. They're acknowledging him as Lord. They're talking about using his name to do miracles and to, and to, 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 to bring healing and deliverance and all kind of stuff. And they only to hear him say, sorry, I don't know you. What was Jesus saying here? He was, that word no, we're told in the original language, is the same word that is used in the beginning when the Bible says Adam knew his wife. And then she um, became pregnant and had a child. It's talking about an intimate relationship. Praise God. So what the Lord was saying here is, it is he's not saying I did not know of you. I did not know what you were doing. He, he, God knows everything. But what he was saying, I don't have a relationship with you. What we are doing, what your pastor is doing, and that's why my wife said, we are just in another part of the field. What you are doing right here is no different than what we are doing in East Africa. We're just working in different parts of the field. God has chosen to place your pastor and his family and you precious folks in this part of the field. And he has chosen to put us in another part of the field. But what the end result, God is looking for a harvest. Praise God. Hallelujah. And obviously, we can't be here. Amen. In fact, before recently, I didn't even know this place exists. <laughs> Hallelujah. And many of you don't even know of some. If I were to mention some of the places, how many people have ever been to Bar Ghazal, South Sudan? You're looking at me as if I'm speaking another language. And I'm actually speaking another language. <laughs> Praise God. But some of these places you may never get to know, never, never see in your lifetime. But there are people. There that Jesus died for. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's why, saints of God, we are so thankful because God has one church. And he has strategically placed us in different places to be able to reach people throughout this entire world. South Sudan gained independence in 2011 from the north, which is predominantly Muslim. They do have Muslims in the, in the south, but... It gained independence in 2011. It is known today as the newest country in the world. But guess what? God is interested so much in the newest country in the world that he has placed people there to reach those souls. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And I can tell you now, there is not much more to South Sudan in terms of... of in other words, we don't, hear, we don't see tourists lining up to go to South Sudan. Hallelujah. Maybe Kenya for the wildlife, but not South Sudan. Praise God. But what is God interested in? He's interested in people. And we come to the scripture. What is he talking about here? In the end result, what's going to matter is your relationship. People get very caught up in religion. My wife, as she testified, we grew up in another religion. Our tradition is completely different from Pentecost. That's why when we first walked into the United Pentecostal Church, we thought these people are crazy. They didn't act like church people, the church people we knew. Amen? In fact, they were doing everything our church taught us not to do in church. <laughs> you weren't supposed to clap. 
You weren't supposed to dance. You weren't supposed to shout. Hallelujah. In fact, the, 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 our favorite scripture was be quiet before the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why as a young person, I wasn't interested too much in, in church. Hallelujah. But thank God for the apostolic church. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me just quickly get to this. Many people get caught up with religion. What is the true and right religion? We used to think about those things. That's why one time we had nothing to do with church. Because we were caught up with this. What is the right church? What is the right religion? Let's, let's just do the simple, simple thing. Go back to the very beginning. If we want to find out what is the original religion, let's go back, right back to creation. What was Adam's religion? Can anybody here tell me what Adam's religion was? Truth is, Adam didn't have a religion. It wasn't Judaism, certainly. That came many years, many years after, many, many years. You know what Adam had? He had a relationship with God. He was a son of God. Hallelujah. The truth is, what happened in the garden when Adam disobeyed God, it wasn't his religion that was affected. It was his relationship. Can I tell you something just to cut through all of this and just kind of quickly bring this to an end to kind of summarize what we, we're talking about here. The reason why we are in South Sudan and other missionaries all over this world and you folks are here is because God is wanting to restore his relationship with mankind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said when it's all said and done, what's going to matter to him, do I have a relationship with you? Hallelujah. And I'm, talk for, I'm talking to myself here also. Praise God. Amen. So God's purpose tonight is to restore his relationship with his creation. That was from the very beginning. That's why the Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. He came to this earth to restore his relationship with us. Let me read it for you from the scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. It goes on. To wit. Listen to this. God was in Christ. What was he doing in Christ? What was God doing in that body? He was reconciling the world unto himself. He was restoring the relationship that he had with his creation. Hallelujah. Not, listen to this. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Because sin separated man and God. So he didn't come here to charge man and to say, why have you sinned and, and, and rebuke us? No, he didn't regard. Our, in fact, he came to take care of the matter of sin. That's why he went to that cross, suffered and died to pay the penalty so I could have a relationship with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank him. Hallelujah. Because sin is no more an obstacle. He paid the penalty for every sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, not imputing their trespasses unto them, but has, and hath committed unto us. Listen to this now, church. Hallelujah. I'm talking to, to right now specifically to the, the body of Christ. Not only did he do this to bring man back to himself, but he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, we're not here trying to get people to become members of the United Pentecostal Church. Or any other apostolic church. I thank God for the United Pentecostal Church. But I want you to know, we're not inviting people to our religion or our church. We are inviting them into our relationship with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the Apostle Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He said, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Uh, you know what an ambassador does? He goes to a foreign nation, many times even, even hostile. And he is trying to restore a relationship 
between the one he represents, the country he represents, with this foreign nation. So everything he's doing is to bring them together. We are here as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so it says, as though, listen to this, as though God did beseech you by us. Hallelujah. One, one, one translation says, we are saying to people, come back to God. That's the message we preach. And that's one of the reasons why we have had the success we have had in South Sudan. In a very short time, we, we, have you, as you heard, we started with nobody. Hallelujah. And then it was a little church with a few people. But in a very short time, we have established over 60 churches. Hallelujah. Over 20,000 constituents in that short period of time. You know why? Because people, when they hear the message, they, they, this is, the, ref, this is the, the response we all always get. Is it so simple? This is completely different from everything we've heard before. Because many of them were, their, their religion was witchcraft. And they would have to offer all kind of sacrifices to be able to somehow please their God. But we're telling them, just repent. Just be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. And guess what? You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God himself. Not just the pastor is going to be able to welcome you, but God himself is going to come and dwell within you. And when that happens, you will have no doubt, hallelujah, that you know him for yourself because you will encounter the one who died for you his spirit will come to dwell in you i remember the night god filled me with the holy ghost i'm telling you prior to that i didn't even believe this experience until the lord showed me the scripture and then gave my wife the, the holy ghost the experience just in case i was going to be stubborn hallelujah you know he wanted to make sure i would sleep with it wake up with it live with it eat with it Hallelujah. And God knows exactly what to do with me. Praise God. But guess what? When I got the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you my experience, I found myself. I took quite a while because I, I, was, I, was, I knew I was a tough nut to crack. But God cracked it. Hallelujah. But let me tell you what. I found myself sitting on the floor. And I can tell you, I was a very proud person. I know it. People even told me when they saw me coming after some of the, some of the brethren say, Brother Gross, when we looked at you, we saw pride all over you. And I knew it was true. Because when I was at the altar, that's what God, that's the only thing that delayed me receiving the Holy Ghost. It was as if God was tearing layers of stuff off me. And what God later showed me, it was pride. Hallelujah. But then, thank God, he got through to me. And when, when he filled me, I found myself sitting on the floor and I opened my mouth to thank him and I was speaking in a language I didn't understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I heard a voice inside say to me, Patrick, your sins are now forgiven. I heard him myself. Nobody had to tell me. I not only felt that that was what happened, but he spoke to me. Let's stand. Hallelujah. If you're here this, tonight... We have a very brief time, I know. But could I encourage you, if you need the Holy Ghost, whether you're young or old, my wife and I, we have seen many children being filled with the Holy Ghost. And in Africa, we had to actually struggle at some point because in Africa, they kind of have the, the sense, sometimes the children aren't even allowed to come into the, the church service. They're just outside playing. And when you ask why, it's because they're children. But thank God that's changing. Hallelujah. Our bishop told us long, not long ago, my wife went, to, went into a Sunday school class and she just began to talk to some kids. And then not long after, she gave a little altar call and God filled seven of those children with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. And many of them, of course, wanted to be baptized. 
and our, our bishop gave the permission. We didn't know it was even going to be an issue, but apparently many of the, many of the parents had struggled with seeing their children, but because their children were not filled with the Holy Ghost, they had no reason to stop them. But our bishop told us, he said, when he was baptizing this child, he turned to us and said, Brother and Sister Groves, do you know this is the first child that I'm baptizing in Jesus' name? But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. They need him just as much as you do. And you can see in this world, the devil has no, he has, he, 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 we will go after the littlest, even he'll go after the little children, even in the womb. Hallelujah. But can I tell you, God loves every one of us. And Jesus died for all of us. God bless you tonight as Pastor comes. Let's love the Lord.